Create yourself a presentation. That is probably the simplest and most effective way that I've been able to keep up with the literature, read it, take notes. And here's the thing, you don't have to read every single paper in your field to become a PhD uh, qualified expert. The thing is, is that you have to make sure that you are able to quickly go through the literature, separate out what's good and what's not. And uh, for me, just writing notes never worked. You know, I, I've tried Excel documents, I've tried different like online programs, I've even just tried using my reference manager as a way to find stuff and it just never ever worked for me. So this is my method for reading papers and taking notes so that I was able to find things when I needed it and that it uh, helped me really navigate the new academic world that I was entering. And here we go. So the first thing I would do is grab myself a presentation sort of deck like this. Now this is Google Slides, which is free to use, but you don't have to use that. I've also used Microsoft PowerPoint in the past as well, whatever you feel comfortable with. But here's the thing, look, here I have a templated um, slide. And what I want is the paper title, the paper link, the take home messages, any interesting figures or other notes. Um, and I write it here and look, here is one of the most important things for actually sort of like going back to this and making it as user friendly as possible. Just simple tags down here. Now, one thing that I've realized is that when I was going back over my sort of presentation that I made with all of the literature um, sort of like jammed in it, is that I needed a way to sort of like work out why I was looking at this particular paper. And I found that it was only sort of like a handful of reasons why a certain paper would be interesting. So the first thing is literature review. So are you using it as a basis to write a literature review? Just keep that tag in. Is it a new discovery? Is it something that sparks my interest? Is it something that I wanna tell people about in my group, in my uh, meeting with my supervisor? I would use that discovery tag. The other one is must read. Now the thing is that every single research area has like the must read papers. And so these were like the cornerstones. If I felt like this was a paper that I could not sort of not read, it would get tagged as that. Methods. Now method, I would actually use if I came across a paper and I was like, I want to do this. This is a method that I wanna use. This is something I wanna try, but you can call it whatever you want, like must do in the lab or must use for your research, whatever you want. And the last thing is an idea. So is it an idea that is uh, interesting to me right now? Is it an idea that I just want to sort of like, you know, mull over for a little bit? So those were really the reasons why I was looking at the literature. And so I made sure that these tags were in the bottom. And all I really did was delete the ones that didn't make sense for the paper. So you'll see how I use that in a moment, but in the, um, in the special template that I made, they all have to be in there. Okay, let's go and grab some papers and see how this works. Google Scholar is a place where I initially go. Now, I also recommend going to Elicit. Elicit is where you can go in and just ask some sort of like simple questions, but let's go old school the way I did it and have a look at Google Scholar. What do we wanna look at? We wanna have a look at um, new materials for nanodots. Let's have a look. I have no idea what this is about, but here we are. These, these are all the things. Let's have a look. Where rare earth meets carbon nanodots. All right, I'm gonna grab the PDF of this. One thing I love to do is actually just split up like this. So I have my cheat on one side, my cheat sheet on one side and my uh, paper on the other. And that just makes it really easy to compare and see what's going on. So obviously paper title. First thing I wanna do is do no, don't want to delete it. That was stupid. The well, first thing I want to do is duplicate the slide. So then I want to just grab this top bit. We grab that. We also grab the link to where you can actually get it. Take home message. Now this is where you have to skim the paper. You look at the abstract and the conclusions. And I just skim. I'm not interested really in the details at this point. I'm just looking to see if it can help me sort of uh, answer some questions, grab new methods, uh, spark some interest, or maybe it's useful for my literature review. Let's check it out. So here I will scan this. Let's do that. I won't subject you to me actually doing it, but let's have a look to see what it says. All right, so essentially this is a review article. It's gonna talk about the, um, 
the synthetic strategies, applications, uh, and all sorts, and then they present current challenges. So I know that I want to use this really as a literature review. Um, it's something that will maybe help me kind of bring all things together. It is a review article. So down here, I'll make sure that it's a review tag. So I'll remove everything other than the literature review tag, and then take home message. The take home message now can be sort of like summarized really easily. I don't even want to do that myself these days because it's a bit boring. So I'll take the entire thing and I'll head over to chat GPT and I'll say, um, turn it into three bullet points. Okay, let's see what happens. Rare earth elements are widely used in illuminescence for magnetic fields, but their overall performance and aqueous stability need to be improved. Carbon nano dots are excellent, canary carers. Okay, so I can take some of these and I can just copy and paste it across because ultimately this is my first pass. I'm not interested in all of the details. Now that's a bit rubbish. Let's see if I can make that a bit better. Paste without formatting. Done. Interesting figures. Now this is where I think this method really comes into its own because it is not something that I've seen other people do. And so all I do is go through the paper and I'm looking for interesting um, sort of like visual cues as to what the paper's about and why I'm actually would want to re review it in the future. So here, uh, systematic, yeah, that's kind of good, but it's not good enough. Maybe I want to take a picture of some of these people, not today. Uh, but let's have a look. Okay, that's talking about stuff. Now this is interesting. A schematic illustration of a certain process. So maybe that's interesting to me. So using my browser, which is Vivaldi, which I really love, um, I'll go across and I'll just copy and paste that into my document. And you can see there that I've got then a little representation of the sorts of things that it talks about. There may be other things in there that are interesting. There may be some tables. There may be some really sort of like complicated things that I want to sort of put in, but really it's just what stands out to me. Now, to be honest with you, in a review article, there's so much that I won't put much in, but it will just show me the sorts of illustrations that, um, that have, are in there. And it will help me as well just sort of like, uh, have a visual representation of what's in that paper. So we'll see if we can find something that isn't a review articles. Okay, new now, let's have a look to see what this one's about. So once again, I'm gonna head over to my template. I'm gonna go and duplicate slide. And that is essentially how I'm gonna have a look at the different uh, papers. So I'm gonna go in here, let's copy that. Let's go in here. Let's copy and paste that, there we are. So paper link, I'm gonna grab the entire link up here, but you can also sort of like just take whatever link makes sense. Okay, that's, a that's crazy that link, but you get the idea. As long as we can find it again, that's all that matters. Um, take home message, so once again, now I'm gonna review the um, main uh, abstract. Okay, these are the sort of words I'm looking for in this present study. And then it's actually gonna tell me what this study is about. So in this present study, all right, good. So this is good for me. This tells me what they've done. I'm gonna copy and paste this, go across to chat, chat, chat GPT, that's what it's called, and paste that in. And then I'm gonna say, um, oh, no, okay. Sum, summarize, uh, oh, okay. It's, it's already doing it, it's doing it for me. Great, it's, it actually knows that I want a summary, which is kind of weird. Um, but these, these are the take home messages. Carbon nanodots were synthesized, it tells me the average size, um, it tells me the compatibility, and the dots were found to have free radical scavenging properties. Oh, okay, well that's interesting to me. So that's what I want, that's what I wanna see in here. So let's go in, take home message, go down and paste that in, but we're gonna paste it without formatting. Okay, now interesting figures. Let's go through and see if we've got any interesting figures in here. So we've got uh, what happens, we've got all of this stuff, that's okay. Well, this now is starting to look interesting to me. This is also interesting to me. Uh, this is the reduction assay, uh, quantitative assay for cellular stuff. Okay, so let's have a look. Now maybe I want this one. This, pe this is the kind of image that will be the most interesting for me. So I'm gonna copy that, capture it, and then it's gonna go into my presentation. 
So what is it that is about this, uh, this, this one that I like? So this is a new method for me or ideas. So I'm gonna keep the tags as method or ideas and that's it really, that's my process. And I do that for as many articles as I need to. And as you can see, it's probably taking me just like two or three minutes per article, but really this is the first pass. This is nothing crazy. If I do anything more, um, I will spend hours wasting time on papers that maybe aren't useful to me. So by doing this when I first start a project, I build up a huge bank of knowledge and resources that I can go back through and have a look at. Okay, one thing that I think is really important is that once you've got like hundreds in here, sometimes it can be hundreds, all you have to do is go here and go control find and then find in your document whatever you want. So if you are looking for methods, you can go through and say, well, I actually want all of the method stuff. So let's go have a look. Okay, well, here's a method that maybe I want to do in my research. Um, and you've got a link to the paper, you've got the take home message to refresh yourself. And then we go on to the second stage. So you build out this uh, magical document for yourself. And the one thing I love about it is that it allows you to quickly go through in presentation mode. So if we go to slideshow mode, the one thing I absolutely love about this, so there's obviously the uh, the template, but you go through and you can say, well, was it carbon, was it that figure that I remember? No, was it this figure? No, was it, okay, well maybe it was this one that I care about. And so you just flick through and I love this kind of quick flicking action. It really appeals to me rather than sort of like scrolling endlessly down an Excel document or a Notion uh, kind of page. It just completely makes more intuitive sense to me. Um, and I can find things much quicker as long as I tag them, I use the appropriate kind of take home messages and I, I'm very visual, I guess. And so I do remember, oh, you know, the paper with the weird diagram rather than what was actually kind of written. Um, and so this is just such a great way to have all of your uh, literature review in one spot, how to take notes on it and how to find it really, really easily afterwards. But of course it doesn't stop there because we're just skimming. This is the first stage of how to read as a PhD student. This is like the filtering stage. Next, we have to actually go and read the paper in detail. Reading the paper in detail is very important. Now there is no trick to this. You cannot simply paste this into an AI tool because as I've shown in my other video, go check it out here, AI doesn't catch some of the most important things about papers at the moment. So we do have to go down to taking notes and printing out the paper. Now you don't have to print it out, but I find that if I have it on my computer, I'm reading it as a PDF, I don't read it like I actually should. So I do print it off. So let's print off this bad boy right now. Here it is. On my desk, I would have loads and loads of printed out papers because I don't think there's any shortcut to reading it, uh, not in full, but at least reading the abstract conclusions and whatever else interests you in this paper. And all I would do is write on the paper um, exactly what I wanted. I would use red or green or something that stood out. I didn't tend to use highlighters. Highlighting is a weird thing for me, but uh, yeah, I'd go through and I'd just read it. And then if there was something that stood out, I would underline it and I'd write notes in the uh, in the sections along, you know, in all the blank spaces. And so it's really as simple as that. And like I said, there is no shortcut. So you have to sit down and you have to give this paper if it's interesting to you some time. And it may only be five minutes, but you do have to give it a bit more time than that simple sort of first pass. So what are you actually using this paper for? If it's methods, so if I go here and have a look at the methods, if this was something that was interesting me, um, so I would go and try to find the methods section, which uh, I'm hoping is in here, it should be in here, where are you? Okay, here we've got the materials and methods. So the materials and methods is huge. Let's have a look. I want to have a look at the synthesis and characterization of carbon dots. That's exactly what I wanna do now. So briefly, 50 grams of date molasses was dissolved in blah, blah. So here we are, this is what I would want. So I take a little pen and I'd say, okay, this section is what I want to do. 
methods. And you know what? If I don't write on any of the pages, I don't have to actually keep this as it is. Like I can get rid of all of these papers. I would only actually ever keep the pages that were interesting to me because the rest of it is just kind of filler in that sense once you've identified what is truly useful for you. So I would keep this page and I'd make sure that I could actually read the uh, the citation, which is down here. Um, and if I didn't have the front page, maybe I'd take a note of the title on top, but ultimately that was it. And then I'd have a selection of two read papers on one side of my desk and the single pages or the couple of pages that I found interesting from each uh, journal article on another section of my desk. And uh, that's really how I organize things. Now you can do this in a more digital fashion. Maybe I'm a little bit old school when it comes to printing it out. Um, but I did print out nearly every article that I really wanted details from. It's the only way that I could really get the information into my brain um, and just sort of like having this material section. As soon as this material section was written in my lab book, there was no reason for me to keep this anymore. So I would get rid of it, you know? you just have to sort of like be clever about what you do keep and don't keep. And people get overwhelmed because they print off loads of stuff and never get through it. So that's why it's important to have that first pass with your literature review. You can flick through it quickly. You can uh, go back to it as often as you want, refresh it, and also feel free to have and a different kind of presentation for each section of your research. You may have multiple projects and you may not have complete overlap. So have different literature files and presentations for each section. I would do that if I started a new paper, for example. I'd say, okay, this is for the high, high uh, throughput um, paper and therefore here's everything I want to go into that paper, here's all of the literature and I'd copy and paste slides from other sections and it just worked for me. So that is how I did it as a PhD student and postdoctoral researcher and maybe it will be your favorite way too. So there we have it, there's everything you need to know about how to read and take notes as a PhD student and researcher. I found that this was the best method for me. I really didn't like the Excel documents. I really didn't like just using my reference manager like Mendeley. This was the way it worked for me. It was quick, it was much more visual, and it allowed me to um, really sort of like get to grips with a certain uh, field very, very quickly, even if I had had nothing to do with it in the past. So let me know in the comments if that works for you. Let me know in the comments your tricks. And uh, there are more ways that you can interact with me. The first way is to head over to my newsletter where you'll get five emails over about two weeks, everything from the tools I use, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content available for free, so go sign up now. There's also academiainsider.com. That's where I have my two eBooks, The Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I also have, well, I also have uh, the forums there. There's a blog, it's going off and it's all to make sure that academia works for you. All right then, I'll see you in the next video.